They waited years for the Rebuild Florida program to repair or place their homes damaged in Hurricane Irma back in 2017. About three months ago, we shared the stories of these four homeowners who you see right here. And tonight we're on your side with an update as we continue to investigate a program that involves hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars. My roof is horrible. Tarps are getting bad and starting to leak through this last Hurricane Debbie that came through. Four months after we first visited Mary Gill's Middleburg home. It's just getting worse. Her roof that was damaged by Hurricane Irma continues to deteriorate. She applied for the Rebuild Florida Housing Repair and Replacement Program, but told us she'd been waiting for an environmental review since 2021. We took our concerns to the head of Florida Commerce when we sat down with him in Tallahassee in May. Uh, Mary Gill, unfortunately, she's never actually been in the program. She applied well more than a year after um, uh, the program's application window closed. And I have a caseworker, I have a case, and then to say I'm not even in the program, that just blew me away there. And then when I call and check on it, I'm in the program. In June, weeks after we aired Gill's story, she received this email from Florida Commerce saying her file was in the eligibility phase of the program, pending the final determination of benefits for her project. Around the beginning of August, August I called them and asked them what was going on with my case. And they said that, that I was still in final determination and they did not know when it would be accepted. She's not the only one still waiting. The Commerce Secretary assured us all of the homes in the Irma program would be finished by this past July. When the contract with IEM, the company it hired to administer the program, ended. The contract for the contractors ends then, so, um, so they must finish it in July. Um, that that is uh, that's uh, you know non movable for us. We've asked Florida Commerce multiple times for a response on that deadline not being met, and for an update on who's now administering the program and how much that company is being paid. We are still waiting for those questions to be answered. In July, a spokesperson told us 250 homes are in the construction or pre-construction phase of the program and are now expected to be completed by the end of the year. The program from the very beginning hasn't been run right. This, the Attorney General here in the state of Florida has got to do an investigation. Robert Brooken says while some repairs have been made to his new mobile home in Baker County since we first interviewed him, they're subpar, and his biggest complaint hasn't been resolved. The mobile home Rebuild Florida gave him is about 300 square feet smaller than his home that was damaged. Like type and size home, far from it. If they'd give me the floor plan, I would have denied it. This isn't working for us. $247,000 of taxpayer money was used to replace his mobile home, money he does not think was wisely spent. If they allowed me $247,000 to replace my home, I could have done that and more. But a lot of money went in someone's pocket. After we gave Florida Commerce a list of names of homeowners struggling to get help, you can see the lines. They sent a team to tour many of the homes, like Janet Jackson's in Jacksonville. No, not all of the problems have been fixed. The windows, the electrical, the gutters, and the doors. But she says communication has greatly improved with Florida Commerce. Every time I call, I do get a response before you months will go by, no response. And she's hopeful all of the work will soon be finished. You guys made a big difference in what we were going through. By you going to Tallahassee, by you talking to us, interviewing us. So to me, I, if it wasn't for you, you and your team, we would still be spinning our wheels. I believe that. For Anthony Stevens, a disabled Jacksonville veteran who had a list of complaints when we first toured his home. You check the dough and you will see the gaps. He says his problems have now been resolved. He's just waiting for the final walkthrough. After you aired the story, everything started to start moving in the right direction. He says the contractor fixed his garbage disposal, his misaligned doors, his roof, and even replaced his floors that he believed had been installed incorrectly. But after you all came in and uh, everybody 
they seemed like they found found some jumping beans and they started getting everything taken care of. And no ifs, ands, and buts about it. If it was not for you all, it would not have happened. As for Mary Gill, she continues to wait. Yes, I need help. I am a single senior woman and I cannot do this on my own. And I had faith when I filled out that application that Rebuild Florida was gonna help me. And here it is all these years later and I'm actually worse than I was to begin with. Now, IEM says it completed more than 3,700 homes, about 95% of the project, despite facing unprecedented challenges like the COVID pandemic, which extended the timeline beyond the state's original projections. The company says it transitioned a small percent of the remaining homes to the state for final completion in full compliance with its contractual obligations. And you can read the full statement and you can see our extensive reporting on the Rebuild Florida program by going to firstcoastnews.com slash rebuild. And you can watch our investigative special at 1130 tonight on First Coast News Plus.